Hello data scientists on the rise! Today we are looking at the star history website to follow the evolution of the number of stars of your favorite GitHub repositories or even look at the growth of your own open source projects. How about we do that in pure Python? We'll use Streamlit to build the UI, Plotly Express for the interactive line chart, and then finally the GH API library by Jeremy Howard and Hamuel Hussein, co-founder and contributor to the FastAI library, one of the most used deep learning frameworks out there. This GH API library got the creds. Before doing anything, we need a GitHub personal access token. We will be downloading a lot of repository data from the GitHub API and the API itself is rate limited. If you're doing too many unauthenticated download requests, then GitHub is going to look at you with mean eyes and then shut down the door to you. But with a personal token, GitHub will allow up to 5,000 requests per hour, which is totally fine for our use case. You will need a GitHub account for this. Go to your settings page, and in developer settings, you will find the personal access tokens page. There, you can generate a new token, give it a name, like look at the dying state of my open source projects, and restrict the scope of the token to public search repo. If by any means somebody steals your token because you got access to a computer, Twitter, or you pushed it to a public repository so everybody has got access to it, then the scope would be pretty limited, the expiration date would be coming pretty soon, and you can revoke this token at any time. Because the personal access token is a secret credential, we don't want to hardcode it inside our Streamlit code app. Create a new .streamlit slash secret stomach file, and then paste your token under a new GitHub section inside this file. Add the file to your git ignore if you're using git so this this file doesn't get committed or pushed on a public repo, we will use that later in Streamlit. Create an empty file next to your .streamlit folder and then run it through the Streamlit run command. Add a title and a header in the sidebar and then make sure your Streamlit app is updated. And then celebrate that small victory. Let me write down all of the features we want in our Streamlit app. I want to create a new connection to the GitHub API using my personal access token. Check our rate limit just to make sure that we're not over doing it. Add a text input so any user can add any number of GitHub repositories to analyze and plot. Check that each repository actually exists. Download the star metadata for each repo into a single data frame and then plot this data frame. If we look at the result of the API, we get a list of users with the date at which said user starts the repository. The way I envision this data frame, save each date inside a column and and then add a count next to it in a new column. That way we can build a cumulative sum to get the evolution of the number of stars for each repo. And then we add a column with the name of the repository. Let's start with text input. So I'm going to use a text area instead and then consider that each line in the text area represents a repository for the user. Create a new function that we will use to initialize the connection to the GitHub API. Now, I imagine this is a request session. I assume we don't want to recreate it every time the Streamlit app reruns. Let's add experimental singleton decorator so that the object is preserved for the whole duration of your Streamlit app. Let's also create a check rate limit method. That's just to make sure that we don't get the GitHub API angry. Before going further, we want to check that each repo actually exists. Create a check repo method. In the body of this function, let's try to fetch the number of stars that the repo currently has. And if we get an error, we will just assume that the repo does not exist. Now we're going to assume that the existence of a repo does not change during the duration of our streamlit session. So you can just cache this information using the experimental MIMO decorator at the top of this method. Now you just iterate through each line of the text area and check that the repo exists. Time to download the information of all the stargazers. If you're trying to use this app on like bigger projects like Streamlit itself, the Streamlit repository has almost 20,000 stars. That's more than the number of visible stars in the sky. We're not downloading all of them in one go. What the GitHub API does is it paginates the results. So it will send you a first page with 100 users, then a second page with the next 100 users, the third page, fourth page, and etc. You would be 
the one to download each page from the first to the last to get all of the user information. Fortunately, the GH API library provides a pages and page iterator that is going to download all of the pages for you. To use this iterator, we only need the number of pages that the request has. And then we can use this information inside our iterator to get all of the pages in one go. Now we can iterate. For each page in all of the pages of the endpoint, you can loop into each user inside the page and extract the date information. Nested list comprehension. That way we get a flat list of all of the dates. Now if we build a list of dictionaries with the date and count as keys, we can use that list to build a new data frame with the date and the count as columns. Before going further, those dates are still strings so we need to convert them to date time objects. The data frame we have here has got very irregular time intervals. This is not amazing for time series analysis. What we can do is resample this time series so we got the number of stars for each week of the year. To do that we can use the resample method on the date column. This is going to group the date in the same week together and accumulate the counts for those dates together. It's our job to define how we accumulate those. Here we want to sum all of the counts that belong to the same week of the year. That way we got weekly periodicity with the linked number of stars and we can build the cumulative sum of this count column per week to get the information that we want. Add a new column to add the information of the repo that we are analyzing. We don't expect this data frame to change much so we can add an experimental MIMO decorator to it with a time to live argument if you're deploying that on the cloud. Loop through each repo of the text area to build the corresponding data frame of stars per week and then concatenate all of those data frames together into one big data frame that Plotly can eat. Finally, Plotly Express. Because of the resampling, the date column is now the index of the data frame. So tell Plotly to use the index of the data frame as the x argument, use the cumulative sum count as the y argument, and then color each line by the repository column. Let me also change the way the information is displayed when we hover over the line charts and then display it in your app. And there you go, rising star of data science. If you want to learn more about Streamlit, you can follow this next video or go check me out on Twitter where I post daily updates. I'll see you around. Happy Streamlitting.